Today I'm going to read you guys The Night I Forgot to Brush. I chose this book because I think brushing your teeth is really important and I think the author does a really good job of showing why it's important through this fictional story. The Night I Forgot to Brush. I didn't brush my teeth last night. I honestly thought it would be all right. I didn't want to, or maybe I forgot. I hate to admit it, that happens a lot. But last night was different. I took it too far. As you will see, the results were bizarre. I was deep, deep asleep when I noticed a tickle and a salt sour taste a bit like a pickle. Oh, I'm noticing some figurative language. The tickle grew wilder and so did a sound, like tiny bulldozers pounding the ground. I took out a mirror and what do you think? It was such a shock that I could not even blink. There in my mouth swarmed a great mob of germs, so active, so lively, gave me the squirms. Fungi, bacteria, viruses, more wriggling up out of every pore. With pickaxes, wrenches, jackhammers and drills, and armfuls of blueprints that gave me the chills. For without a doubt, it was quite plain to see, this army of germs had big bad plans for me. You might ask why then I was still in my bed not evicting those germs with my toothbrush instead. The truth is, the things I saw in my face had me hypnotized, horrified, frozen in place. I have to own up, I was curious too. I'd be willing to bet that by now, so are you. They began right away to collect the gross stuff, sweet tidbits and morsels, leftover food fluff. Gunk I hadn't brushed out when going to bed. Yes, I'd left a buffet for them there in my head. And as they collected the mountains of goo, my nose got a whiff like an old rotten shoe. They were filling balloons with my stinky breath gas and handing them out to the kinder germ class. Next thing I knew, they had started to build scaffolds and towers. Those workers were skilled. With skull-pounding blows, they hammered and clanged, leaving tooth chips and cracks with each thundering bang. Deep down in my gums, they burrowed and dug to set their foundations painfully snug. Then built up my teeth in the blink of an eye, from the roots to the cusps, slick buildings, tooth high. There were shops, parks, apartments, a library too shaped right out of all my unbrushed teeth, tooth goo. Right then, I realized with a gut-wrenching frown, those rogues had constructed a tiny germ town. Once it was built, you'd think they were done, but those germs didn't settle. They set out to have fun. With a rev and a growl, a small motor roared out and a mini tooth buggy went flying about. It bumped from my molars up to my canines, leaving gelat gelatinous, leaving gelatinous trails of exhaust behind. Some leftover popcorn, quite old, slick, and crusted, was used to sled slopes between my two right thickests. So it looks like this word this book is using some expert words that have to do with our mouth. Uh, they're new for me too, so that's why I'm sounding them out. And I think in the end, they have kind of a mini glossary, even though it was a fiction book, since there are some expert words, they gave us a glossary to tell us what those new words mean. So one of them that I read was, it looks like they don't have this one, gelatinous, but I do see bicuspids. So bicuspids are large, bumpy side teeth that chew food. I guess it's like teeth in the back. I felt next a terrible thrum throbbing pain, ricochet from the base of my throat to my brain. I'm embarrassed to say what it was, but I gotta. 
my poor Avila had become a pinata. I think that word was also in the glossary. So Avila, or maybe it could be Uvala, I'm not sure. The round lobe that hangs in the back of the throat. So if you look in a mirror, I think you might be able to see this in the back of your throat too. My teeth were all aching, my gums red and sore. I thought with dismay, I can't take it anymore. What a mess, what a stench, what a lot of decay. How would I undo such wild disarray? Then it suddenly hit me. The answer was clear. The perfect device was delightfully near. I leapt from my bed and burst out of the door. My feet went like lightning across the dark floor. I scooped up my toothbrush, magnificent tool. I squeezed out some toothpaste, fresh, minty, and cool. Then I brushed and brushed, unlike ever before. I gargled and rinsed and then brushed even more. It became quite hypnotic, my toothbrush's swoosh. The sink water leaving the drain with a whoosh, swoosh, splat, whoosh. The sound of my frothy spit making a splat. I don't really know what occurred after that. Maybe my teeth flashed bright white like the moon and set me right into a toothbrushing swoon. For next thing I knew, I woke up in my bed, not a single small tingle of germs in my head. I started to doubt, had it all been a dream? A terrible trick? Just a sleepy head scheme? That must be, I thought, it's the best explanation. Those outrageous germs were a hallucination. Just then, I looked down into my great surprise, what lay in the sheets right in front of my eyes. My toothbrush, it was tucked neatly into my bed. Embarrassment rushed from my toes to my head. I suddenly knew with a startling fright those germs had invaded my mouth in the night. I promised myself right then and right there to never not brush again, never to dare. Those nasty old germs, if they ever come back, won't stand a chance, and that is a fact. My toothbrush and I, we know what to do. I'd be willing to bet that by now, so do you. So this book has some really great figurative language that I want to look at in a second. But again, I think this book does a really good job of reminding us why it's so important to brush our teeth, even though obviously it's fiction. Um, they're making the germs act like monsters and build towns and do things that we know are not real. But germs in our mouth are real. There are germs in our mouth if we don't brush our teeth. And I can tell you from my experience, if I ever fall asleep without brushing my teeth, I wake up the next morning and I just like feel gunk on my teeth. It does not feel good. It does not feel clean. So use this as a lesson that, you know, even if you're really tired, you know, really try to make sure you brush your teeth before going to bed and that you're brushing your teeth when you wake up. And just like how we want to wash our hands for the appropriate amount of time, which is 20 seconds, we want to brush our teeth for the appropriate amount of time, which I believe is three minutes. So now that we talked about that, I did want to quickly look at some of the figurative language. There was a lot of it in here. It looked like it was mostly similes. They were using, the author was using like to compare two things. So like on this page, I remember it says, my feet went like lightning across the dark floor. So there is an actual lightning in this part of the book but he's comparing how fast he's going to lightning. So that makes us know that he's going really fast. Go get that toothbrush and get rid of those germs. So when you're reading your own books, if you notice any figurative language that you'd like to share with me, definitely take a picture and send it to me. I'd love to see it. Um, thanks for watching. Hey y'all, so after I finished reading this book, I went and looked up some of those new words that we learned and I realized that I actually read them incorrectly. So I was showing you guys that all of us readers will get to words that we may not know in a book and the best we can do is use a reading strategy to try and figure it out. Sometimes we'll read it right and sometimes we might not. So in this case I did read several words wrong so I just wanted to tell you the correct way to read them. 
So one of them was this word that I read as bicuspids. It's actually bicuspids. So bicuspids are the large teeth in the side of your mouth that you use to chew food. Another one was this one that I read as uvula. It's actually uvula. And the uvula is the round lobe. It's in the back of your throat. And there's one more word. Uh, this word here that I read gelatinous is actually gelatinous. So this is just a lesson to us readers that when we get stuck on a word, we should definitely try a strategy to figure it out, but we may not always get it right. And if you can, access the internet to look up the word. It's a great way to double check if you are reading it correctly.